everybody, my name is Michaela Mooney and this is my honors project for Math 326, Discrete Math for Teachers. My project is called Delta Math and Delta is a Greek symbol that means change in. So the title really means change in math and what I was looking to see is how our math journey changes through the years from kindergarten through 12th grade. So what I did, I interviewed at three different schools First, I interviewed Big Rapids, um, the high school here near Ferris, which qualifies as a low-income public school, and they have two different elementary schools, and the one I interviewed at was Riverview Elementary. Next, I interviewed Coopersville, which is just a general public school, and it's my hometown, so it was nice to get to talk to all of my old teachers. And then finally, I interviewed at North Point Christian, which is a private Christian school in Rockford. So once I sat down to talk with these teachers, I asked them three different questions. First, I asked, what grade do you teach? And um, if they teach multiple grades, I just asked them to answer the question for each different grade. And then secondly, I asked, what's the most important math concept you teach in your math class? And finally, in general, what is one thing you want your students to take away from your class? After I got all of these responses, I needed to relate them back to our class. So I went through and labeled them as a discrete math response, an algebraic thinking response, or doesn't relate to either of them. Discrete math is math content in dis that is discrete and not continuous. So things like integers, graphs, state and statements and logic, not things like decimals and fractions. Algebraic thinking is math content about analyzing and understanding patterns, relationships, and how things change. So if their response talks about patterns, combinations, variables, and functions, it will have an algebraic thinking label on it. And finally, any other math content that doesn't fall under these two categories will be labeled with a neither sticker. So things like in the middle, like geometry, will have a neither on them. So after this introduction of what to expect when we dive into these teacher responses, let's jump right into kindergarten. Alrighty, so before we jump in, I just wanted to make a note that some teachers did not respond when I reached out to them. So I used multiples that may have come from the same school just so that way we have a good amount of teacher responses. Um, but in kindergarten, unfortunately, I only had responses from teachers in Big Rapids, but that doesn't mean we can't still learn something from it. So looking at the kindergarten teacher responses, just in general, the math focus was counting. That was the biggest thing that they wanted their kids to be able to do. And this fell under the discrete math because they were only looking at integers. But in general, the teachers really wanted their students to have confidence, confidence, self-worth, and sharing abilities once they left their classroom. In first grade, the math focused was mainly addition, subtraction, and base 10 concepts. They all three were mostly discrete math related. This third one, the teacher actually says algebraic thinking in her response. So I went ahead and put the algebraic thinking label on there, but still using only integers and um, no decimals or fractions yet. But in general, these teachers wanted their students to know that they are loved, that math is fun, and the teacher from North Point actually relates God to math, which is kind of cool. Jumping right into second grade, the main math focus of all of these teachers' responses was still addition and subtraction, um, just in different circumstances, like money, measurements, and data. But they were still in discrete math. Some algebraic thinking is um, being brought in, but mostly we're just adding and subtracting um, integers still. But in general, these teachers wanted their students to learn kindness, different strategies, and to 
walk away knowing that learning is a process and making mistakes is part of it. Now moving on to third grade, things get a little bit different here. We are still focusing on addition and subtraction, fluency and learning, multiplication and division, but the teacher at North Point says that he's teaching fractions in third grade, which doesn't which isn't happening in these other two schools. So that was a little bit interesting to learn. But in general, these students want their or these teachers want their students to learn teamwork, reasoning and that math is important and applicable to everyday life forever. In fourth grade, we move away from this discrete math. This is the first grade where none of the teacher responses have discrete math in their labels. But the main math focus are things like fractions and decimals, hence why discrete math is not applicable anymore. They are still focusing on multiplication and division and place value, just trying to get more fluent, fluent in doing those things. And um, in general, all three of these teachers agree is that agree that math is important and we can all learn to use it. Jumping into fifth grade, we don't see algebraic thinking or discrete math anymore. The main math focus of these of this grade is word problems, order of operations, and multiplying and dividing fractions. In general, these teachers want their kid their students to have math skills and strategies for the, to prepare them for the future. In sixth grade, algebraic thinking becomes prominent as students are starting to build relationships between the different types of math they've been learning. They are learning things like whole numbers being multiplied by decimals, proportions, word problems, and multi-step equations. These teachers want their students to walk away from their class knowing that we are all math people because we're all, we're all going to use it in our lives and problem solving skills can be used forever. In seventh grade, students are still solving equations and they're learning about negatives and money sense. In general, these teachers want their students to know that they're loved and both of these teachers talk about how they don't allow phrases like I'm not a math person or I'm bad at math because everybody can learn math. Students in eighth grade are getting their first glimpses of things like algebra and geometry as they start to learn about things like slope, linear functions, multi-step equations, um, and the teacher at North Point is actually teaching them about the Pythagorean theorem and statistics. All of these teachers really want their students to walk away having perseverance to get through problems that they might not understand the first try, and they just want them to have confidence. We are now jumping into high school, ninth grade, and across all three schools, Algebra 1 is the primary math content for ninth graders. And the students are learning things like solving equations and linear functions. In general, these ninth grade teachers want their students to learn problem solving and that math isn't scary, it's a tool. In 10th grade, geometry appears to be the primary math concept that is taught, except at North Point, this teacher, Liz Strayer, who is also a response for 11th grade, she teaches Algebra 2 in 10th grade and Geometry in 11th grade. So there's a bit of a different sequence there for her class. But for the Geometry, 
the math teachers want their students to learn area and volumes of shapes, um, which doesn't apply to discrete math or algebraic thinking. But for the algebra two, it is algebraic thinking, and she wants her students to learn problem solving. But in general, these math teachers want their students to have math skills that apply to the real world and that everybody is able to succeed in math. Jumping right into 11th grade, this the main math concept of 11th grade is Algebra 2, except for, again, Liz Strayer. She's teaching geometry to her 11th graders. But for Algebra 2, students are supposed to be learning things like solving equation and f solving equations and recognizing function patterns. In geometry, Liz Strayer is teaching the Pythagorean theorem and area and volume of shapes. And in general, these teachers want their students to know that math can help them in career success. And if they've learned, they've learned how to solve a math problem once in their life and they can do it again for sure. Finally, we have our 12th graders, our seniors. And 12th grade can look different for different students, but it's mainly pre-calc slash calculus, and I've also included a stats teacher in here because some students are learning taking stats or AP stats at this time as well. So they are learning things like trigonometry, derivatives, and integrals in pre-calc and calculus, and in stats they're learning things like hypothesis testing, which stats isn't algebraic thinking or discrete math, but both um, pre-calc and calculus are algebraic thinking. In general, these teachers want their students to walk away being able to connect their previous math to new math and um, to know that stats can be stats and data can be misused. So we should be a little bit skeptical of it when it's being used in things like the media. After collecting all of these teacher responses, putting them in order from kindergarten to 12th grade and comparing them, I have come to three general conclusions. First, our math journeys can look very similar despite what school we go to. We noticed that, especially in high school, the math teachers were teaching very similar things in each grade. So our math, the math content that we take in and um, as we go through is pretty similar even if we're going to um, a low-income school, a public school, or a private school. So that is very interesting and good to know that no matter where you go, you're getting, you're learning good math content. Um, next, we can see, I saw a pattern that we slowly move from discrete math to algebraic thinking, whereas like in the elementary school and kindergarten, we were it was mo mostly discrete math. And then in the middle areas like middle school, we kind of moved away from discrete math into the other general math concepts that don't really fit into the two, either of the two categories. And then once we were in high school, it was pretty much complete algebraic thinking. Um, so that was really interesting to see. And then finally, based on all of these, the teachers, general responses, we can have confidence that our math teachers care about us and how we view math and our relationship with math, which is, it was just so sweet to see um, how deeply these teachers care for their students and really just, they want them, they want the best for them and they want math to be something that is useful and a tool and not scary. Um, but it was just so fun to get to talk with all of these teachers and inspiring to me as a future math teacher. Um, but I hope everybody listening has learned something new today, um, has had their interest peaked, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you so much for listening. Mm -hmm.